As the film starts, a ninja warrior called Psycho Tech attacks Jump City, the home city of the Teen Titans. Blowing up things around with his cool gadgets and his body also regenerates when he is injured. After a long chase through the city, the Teen Titans finally manage to capture him, but he has already caused a huge mess and they have to repair most stuff. Beast Boy claims he is exhausted and he really needs a vacation, but Robin says heroes don't need a vacation and he goes on to interrogate their new threat in town with his translation system. Psychotech reveals he was sent by a very notorious criminal from Tokyo, Japan, called Brushogun, but he soon performs a somersault and escapes before he spills other beans. The Titans try to locate him with their gadgets and Raven's psychic powers, but he is nowhere to be found. However, Robin never gives up, and he vows to track the boss who sent Psychotech, and he asks the Titans to pack their stuff. They are heading to Tokyo. Beast Boy is super excited about the vacation to Japan since he'll finally get to see comic book companies, sumo wrestling, and try out the original sushi boat. The team then travels to Tokyo, the city, with many lights and Robin asks them to stay out of trouble. Meanwhile, a mysterious guy in a dark costume monitors their arrival into town and thinks that Psycho must have talked. Start Fire learns the Japanese language by lip contact with a boy and she asks him for directions to Shinjuku, the roughest part of the city, where the criminal boss could probably be. However, a reptilian monster soon attacks the city, luring the Titans to fight it, but they fail to defeat it, since its body regenerates just like Psychotech's powers. Fortunately, they are helped by a supernatural defense force called the Tokyo Troopers, who successfully cages the beast in an energy field. The troopers' leader commander, Uehara Daizo, welcomes the Teen Titans to Japan and takes them for a tour around their headquarters and base of operations. The troopers have managed to reduce crime rates in Japan by 200%, and Robin wishes to use their equipment to find the mysterious criminal called Brushogun. However, Daizo laughs at it, claiming Brushogun is just an urban legend in Japanese culture, and Psycho Tech is even more unheard of. The Tokyo City Mayor soon honors the trooper leader for his heroics in defeating crime, and before leaving, Daizo asks the Teen Titans to enjoy their stay in Japan, but leave the law enforcement to them. Now that their endeavors appear to be a wild goose chase, it's time for Teen Titans to enjoy the new city. Meanwhile, the mysterious dark guy is relieved that they are no longer looking for him but he will keep monitoring their movements and some other strange creatures track them. Cyborg tries out an all-you-can-eat restaurant. Beast Boy goes to the comic book center where he is distracted by a girl, while the rest also find themselves some fun things to do. Later that day, Starfire and Robin retreat to a rooftop to discuss more intimate matters, but just then, Robin recalls how Psycho talked as if he was terrified of someone and he realizes Brucho Gun could be real after all. Robin then concludes that true heroes never take breaks, and he has no time for such small affairs, and Starfire leaves in disappointment. Elsewhere, Raven is bored and she enters a mysterious building, while Cyborg tastes the octopus for his first time. Beast Boy gets lured by the girl into a karaoke performance and all the girls there celebrate him. Later that night, while Robin is worrying about how to find the criminal, he is attacked by the ninja Psycho Tech. Their fight ends with Robin defeating Psycho, after pummeling him into the ground, and the crowd believes he has killed the ninja. Commander Daizo then arrests Robin and he tries to explain that the Psycho wasn't an actual human, since he could regenerate, and he finds this to be a sick joke or a setup by Brucio Gunn. Meanwhile, Raven goes to read about Brucho Gun from a bookshop, and the Keeper hands him a book about it, claiming the guy is no myth at all. Beast Boy struggles to escape his fangirls, but he finally does, and outside, he meets with Cyborg, who is chased from the restaurant for eating too much. The two then run together, while some strange, creepy eyes watch them from the shadows. Later, Starfire sees a news report in which Robin was apprehended and the Teen Titans have been ordered to turn themselves in, or leave Tokyo at once. The Titans therefore plan to regroup and find Robin, but the mysterious guy orders his minions to erase them. 
Later, as Robin is being transferred in a van, a slip of paper written the name Bruchot Gun gets into the armored car and explodes, freeing him, and Inspector Daiso orders a search for Robin. Robin then goes on to steal a thug's clothing and sneaks into their pub to ask for Bruchot Gun, but the waiter claims the troopers don't like anyone talking about the criminal. Robin learns that Bruchot Gun is actually real, and he possesses strange powers, though one day he just disappeared and later, there emerged newer criminals. Their talk is soon interrupted by the troopers, who chase Robin throughout the city, and he is rescued by Starfire. Later, they having some yoga and are about to have another tender moment, but they're interrupted by the other Teen Titan members. Cyborg reveals they ran a test on the liquid from the Psychotech incident, and it is actually ink, just like the stains from their engagement with the other criminals. Raven also shows them a book about Bruce Gun. Tokyo's first supervillain, who was once an ordinary artist, who used Japanese dark magic to bring his creations to life, but the magic ink entered him and he got transformed into Bruce Gun. This revelation angers Robin, since he was framed for killing an ink creation, and he prepares to fight for justice. However, everyone in Tokyo is after them, and they are chased and hunted around the city. Finally, Robin deduces that Bruce Gun's hideout could actually be the comic book factory, Beast Boy's earlier suggestion, and they break into the building. The place is empty and creepy with no guards, but they find a certain emaciated guy revealed to be Bruce Gun himself, but he reveals that he is actually being used as a slave for his powers in the printing press to create the criminals. The guy also reveals that he sent Psycho Tech to attack them, and the paper that freed Robin since it was the only way to ask for help and lure them to Tokyo. The real villain turns out to be Commander Daizo, who used Broshogun's powers to make himself a hero by creating villains which he then captured with his team of troopers. The troopers also attack the Titans, and during the fight, they realize the troopers are also made of ink, so they don't have to hold back. Robin corners Daizo, but he jumps into the ink and gains Broshogun's magic, transforming him into a giant monster with Broshogun at its core. Daiso also creates more ink villains and a battle ensues between the two sides. Seeing their great numbers, Robin climbs onto the monster and removes Brushogun from within it, causing the monster to disintegrate, along with its creations. Brushogun thanks Robin for saving him, while Daiso rests on the ground, defeated. In the aftermath, Robin tells Starfire that he realized he was wrong before, and maybe he could be more than a hero and they embrace each other in the rain while the Titans watch. A short while later, the Teen Titans are honored and celebrated in Tokyo City for their heroic actions, and with Robin's name being cleared, and he is not a wanted man anymore. Cyborg is also honored by the chefs with a giant cake with several delicacies, and he immediately flies into action, while Robin has an even better time. From Raven's endeavors, she only ended up in a gum advertisement she tried earlier, but at least she did something. The Tokyo City Mayor hands the Teen Titans Medals of Honor for uncovering the truth, pursuing justice, and protecting their city from a treacherous evil. Later, while Robin and Starfire are holding hands, Beast Boy is sad that it's time to go home, but Robin finally admits that even heroes need a vacation. Beast Boy therefore suggests that next time they head to Mexico, but he earns a slap from Raven, and the exciting film comes to an end. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to our channel. I'll be back with another interesting movie recap. Until then, take care.